Hi there, and welcome to Basically Longarm Quilting, featuring the Innova Autopilot Mach 3. In this episode, we are going to be taking a look at how to do a simple sashing in Autopilot. So, let's go do it! So, in our software, on our main viewport screen right here, we have a quilt size that is um, set up from what we used in the edge to edge episode, which was a 36.5 by 40. Um, when you're doing your edge to edge, you like to have that quilt size as precise as possible so it gets where it needs to go. But going forward with sashings and blocks and stuff like that, you can have a larger quilt size so you can play around on the grid. Um, so I'm gonna go to settings, come into quilt size, and I'm gonna amp it up to a large size. I'm gonna do 100 by 100, just so I have plenty of grid room to work around and play with. Um, we'll always stay within our sew zone, of course, but at least I've got plenty of space to do things around. So I'm gonna go find the pattern that I'd like to use today for our sashing. So I'm gonna come down into my pattern library, and I'm gonna be looking for this P2P swirl pattern. This one's by Joyce Lundergan. And I'm gonna double left click on the pattern. It's gonna go into my pattern pad come down to the bottom here and I'm going to click on close. Now the next thing that I want to do is head over to my machine. And when you are in the Mach 3 icon um, for your autopilot quilting, your left hand button will drop push pins um, on your grid, which will give you more or less a boundary to kind of work with, um, have a visual on the screen when you're working with placing your patterns. So I'm going to use this left hand button and I'm going to click points around my sashing right here. And I'm going to have my laser um, right on the ditch of this as I work around. So I'll start over here on my left hand side and it doesn't matter what direction you go. So I'm just going to work around this section probably um, I like to do more push pins than, um, than not, just so I have plenty of give room, especially if those sashings aren't perfectly straight. Um, you can really, really see that on the quilt. Now, if you'll notice on the screen, you'll see that Autopilot is dropping little blue dots everywhere I'm pressing my left handle button. Um, and what that is, is those are those push pins visual. Um, and I'm gonna get all the way around this sashing as I'm going right to here, drop down, and let me zoom out a little bit so you can see exactly what's going on. And then I'm gonna work my way back all the way around. And so once I get done with this process of clicking these little pins out, we're gonna stop right here. I'm going to go up to my push pin icon on my screen, and I have um, close when done selected. So now that I am at my last point right here and I just have that last section to put up, I'm gonna cl click on done, and it's going to place a final close line right there for me. Now I can also get rid of all these blue dots if I would like to by going um, in my setup option here and click on remove all underneath remove pins. And now I'm just gonna have this nice pink uh, magenta line to give me a visual of where uh, my sashing is on my quilt. So what I can do is take this point to point swirl pattern and I'm just gonna drag and drop it onto the screen. And I'm gonna come into my transform icon, my little stretchy man. And I'm gonna set this pattern where I kinda of want it to lay, so I'm gonna say right about there. And I'm gonna resize, open it up, and scale it to fit exactly where I want it to go in this sashing. Once I have that placed, I can then come up to my more repeat tool, and I can just click on that, and it's gonna add as many repeats as I want as I click. So I'm gonna get to that last one right here, and it didn't finish up all the way, that's okay. Um, I'm still in my transform tool. I can take this last one and just stretch it right over so it fills up that space exactly the way I want. Now this sashing was fairly straight. However, we're not always gonna see that on real life's quilts. And if I click off of this and click back on, you'll see that using that more repeat tool, 
combined these patterns or grouped them together and I can't individually change them if I needed to. So I'm going to show you how you can um, ungroup these. So with this whole set selected, I'm going to come up to my group tool, which is right up here. And I have an option for ungroup. So I'm going to click on these one more time. I'm going to select ungroup. Click on them again. And now you'll see that you have little start points everywhere. And if I go back into my transform tool, my home, ba my home base, basically, now if I select these patterns, now they're all individual. So if you wanted to make individual changes to them, you can. Um, if you're getting a little too close in certain sections, um, you can make those adjustments. So like right here, it's pretty close to the bottom, but then it starts to move up to the top and you can make any type of adjustments that you need to at that time. So I want to show you how to make um, adjustments to these um, if you need to. So like for this one, it's kind of really close to the top of my um, sashing here. So I can select this pattern and I'm in my transform tool. I can grab the top square here in the middle and I can kind of bring him down. And then I can take this one and stretch him a little bit further so you have a nice even margin. Now when you do that, you'll see that your um, start and end points are no longer connected. Uh, so we can do that to this one too since we're making adjustments. We'll move this one, move that one. And this gets to be a little bit of a personal preference game at this point, but you can see you can get really precise with this and get it exactly where you want them to be uh, whenever you're setting up your sashings, which is really, really cool. So I want to go in and I can make little adjustments to these start and end points in my draw feature. So if I select this pattern, I can go into my draw text feature, which is also where your nodes are located. So I can left click on this and you'll see that all these little blue dots show your nodes. So I can take my node and just bring it a little further down. And this one's got a few on here. So we can take him, bring him down and select this one and put him right there. And you just want to get it as close as you can. We'll come and do the ending as well. Just again, moving them as close as you can. And you'll do that on any ones that you had any adjustments with just to make sure that things go where they need to. Come together, come together. This one, this is a big jump right here. So we'll take him and move him up a little bit and move him up a little bit. Let's check, check our nodes all the way through. We got a, a gap right here. Let's take this one and move him right up to there, just like so. Now that you've made those adjustments, we're going to select all these patterns that are in our row just by dragging and dropping a box right over. It's going to select them all with all those nodes on. Um, we can go into our transform tool just so it has a full selection. And I'm going to go back into my grouping icon. And with those selected, I can go and press my link option. And what link is going to do is with all those selected, it's going to go in where those starting points were and connect them together with a link line just to be sure just in case if I missed one or I didn't get it as close. So that way it stitches up the continuous piece. So I have link selected. Those are done. I'm going to go ahead and click accept. I know that the link took because now I only have one start point and one ending point. So a nice, beautiful way to do a sashing right there. So what I'm going to do now is save my project. And then I'm going to go ahead and click go. The machine will build its sewing profile for it. And then I can click continue. So it'll move to its starting position. Once it gets to its starting point, I can take a single stitch to pull up my thread. I've got both of my threads, my top and my bobbin. I'm going to hold those nice and taut. Press continue. The machine will do its stitching. And it'll be on its way. All right, so it's coming up right here to its ending point on this sashing. It's going to come in, tie off. Once it's ready for me, I can push the machine away, grab a little bit of thread here, push it away, come back to where it stopped, take a single stitch, bring my machine back, just like so, trim my threads away, 
And just like that, you're all set. Thank you so much for joining me today and learning about how easy it is to do sashings with your ANOVA Autopilot. I'll see you next time on Basically Long Arm Quilting.